Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be covering uh, Joshua 4 through 6 and Luke 1, uh, 1 through 20. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Joshua 4 When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulders, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you in the future. And when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Joshua set up the twelve stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. Now the priests who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people. Just as Moses had directed Joshua, the people hurried over. And as soon as all of them had crossed the, the ark of the Lord and the priests came to the other side while the people watched, the men of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manash crossed over, ready for battle, in front of the Israelites, as Moses had directed them. About 40,000 armed for battle, over before the Lord, to the plains of Jericho for war. That day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of the Israelites, and they stood in awe of him all the days of his life just as they had stood in awe of Moses. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant Law to come up out of the Jordan. And so Joshua commanded the priests, Come up out of the Jordan. And the priests, they came up out of the river, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. No sooner had they set their feet on the dry ground then the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal, on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask their parents, What do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before your, you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea. And when he dried it up, before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the people of the earth might know that the 
hand of the Lord is powerful, and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Joshua 5 Now, when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, their hearts melted in fear, and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. Circumcision and Passover at Gilead At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites at Gilveth Haraloth. Now this is why he did so. All those who came out of the Egypt, all the men of military age, died in the wilderness on the way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness during the journey from Egypt had not. Now the Israelites had moved about in the wilderness for forty years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died. And since they had not obeyed the Lord, for the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land he had solemnly promised their ancestors to give us a land flowing with milk and honey. And so he raised up their sons in their place, and these were the ones Joshua circumcised. They were still uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. And after the whole nation had been circumcised, they remained where they were in camp until they were healed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So the place has been called Gilgal to this day. On the evening of the fourteenth day of the month, while camped in at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grains. The manna stopped the day after, and they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan, the fall of Jericho. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him, and he asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. The jo then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy, and Joshua did so. Now the gates of Jericho, well, six, uh, Joshua six. Now the gates of Jericho were securely uh, barred because of the Israelites. No one went out, and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, "See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once." With all the armed men, do this for six days. Have seven priests carrying trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the sound, them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, and then... The wall of the city will collapse, and the army will go up, every one straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, 
take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Law and have seven priests carrying trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. And when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets. And the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the Ark. And, and all this time the trumpets were sounding. But Joshua had commanded the army, Do not give a war cry, do not raise your voice, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout, then shout. And so he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. And then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord. And while the trumpet kept sounding, so on the second day, and they marched around the city once, and they returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak, and they marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except on that day they circled the city seven times. Then uh, the seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blasts, Joshua commanded the army, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared, because she had the spies, she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoting things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel, Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. So all the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. And when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave the, a loud shout, the walls collapsed. And so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord, and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the, to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. And so the young men who had done the spying went in and they brought out Rahab, her father and mother, her brothers and sisters, and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and they put them in a place outside the camp of Beth uh, Israel. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it, but they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho, and she lives among the Israelites to this day. At that time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes, the rebuild this, uh, undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. 
at the cost of his firstborn son. He will lay its foundation. At the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. And that was Joshua 4 through 6. And now we will be turning to Luke 1 1. Luke 1, introduction. Luke 1. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down. To us by those who from, who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants to the world. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most ex- excellent uh, Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. The birth of John the Baptist foretold. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But there were, they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zachariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembly worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias. Your prayers has been answered, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of him, and because of his birth. He will foretell, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the priests to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. When Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and I have been sent. I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. You And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. And that was Luke 1, 1 through 20. Which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Joshua 7 through 9 and Luke 1, 21 through 38. 
Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, we'll be here, God willing, and we hope that you are.